Oh my goodness, NASDAQ is down 2.45% on a single day. S&P 500 down almost a percent and a half. Even the Dow is down by a percent. What's going on here? Well, I'm going to be here to explain to you exactly why this happened. And more importantly, what I think is coming next. So basically, we had one of the dovish members of the Fed, Lil Brainerd, actually come out and say, hey, I think we need to be super aggressive with driving down inflation, which means we got to really reduce the balance sheet. Now, she did say May, but still, look, you just had one of the most dovish members of the Fed come out and say, hey, things are really alarming. We got to move fast on this and we got to start in a month. Now, look, what she's actually talking about is reducing the balance sheet of the treasury bonds that the Federal Reserve actually holds. Now, this is a very tricky topic. I'm not going to get into the whole technical analysis of how this thing works. But essentially, when the Federal Reserve buys bonds in the free market, basically it drives the price of these bonds up and drives the yield down. Now, if the Federal Reserve has to actually start selling bonds, which means that the yield is going to go up and the price is going to be driven down, that's going to send a shockwave through the stock market. Make no mistakes about it. Now, already today is kind of a mini glimpse into what's coming. We're having kind of a mini, mini, mini taper tantrum, a taper tantrum quasi mini. Um, look, it's a big deal. Uh, the Fed sits on $9 trillion of bonds. Unloading that is not going to go easy. It's going to be one of those old scotch your grandpa has in, <laughs> in his cabinet. It's not going to be easy to drink. Uh, now, look, I totally understand this, and so should you. The Federal Reserve basically has two really bad options. They either can let you know, inflation go crazy, or they can crash the stock market. There's nothing in between. And for the most part of last year and somewhat in the beginning of this year, I want to say, the Fed was definitely favoring letting inflation go crazy while saving the stock market. And I think now, if you have one of the most dovish members on the spectrum saying, hey, this can't go on, it seems like a paradigm shift for the Fed, essentially moving way closer to, hey, inflation is the bigger problem. I mean, the stock market will have to suffer. It is what it is. Now, you also have to understand what's going on here as far as politics. The Fed is an independent entity by definition. However, I'm just going to say it right now. The Fed is not clean for political influences. Let's put it this way. And I think that now that the American people definitely understand what inflation is and how inflation can impact their life and how loss of purchasing power is much worse than their portfolio going down by a few percentage points. I think this point actually shows that the politicians now understand that they have to take care of inflation if they don't want to get shellacked in the midterms. But that's just me speculating. I don't know this for sure. The problem is that what they have actually initiated today, which is kind of sending the signal, hey, we're going to tighten much faster than you guys think, is that you might tighten the market into a perma-inverted yield curve, uh, which is a really bad idea. I explained this on the video on my own channel, why an inverted yield curve can cause a recession. Just to give you the quick explanation, essentially when you have an inverted yield curve, it means that the yield is higher on the two-year rather than the 10-year bond. As you know, you know, the US government issues bonds. Some of them are for three months. Some of them are for 30 years. And there's a lot of them in between. And the yield or the interest rate is basically determined by the risk. And the longer the bond is, the greater the risk, which means that the longer the bond, the higher the yield, unless you have an inverted yield curve, which means that the 10-year, sorry, 10-year actually has a lower yield than the two-year. Essentially, that creates a big problem for the banks that don't have a spread. The banks can't take cheap money and lend it out and make money on the difference because the money is just too expensive. And that's a real problem, not to mention the fact that higher interest rates 
create incentives to save, they slow down the economy, potential credit crunch. I think today shows us one thing. The way the stock market reacted to something that um, Brainerd said that she thinks that should happen in May, which is not a decision, it's not an announcement, it's nothing official. The way the market reacted proves that the market definitely priced in the rate hikes for this year, which is at least seven of them, but it hasn't priced in, for some reason, the balance sheet reduction. It's a big deal. It means there's more bottom here to be found. It seems like it. Now, look, my personal criticism about this is very simple. I mean, why wait? If you think that this situation is so bad, why are we waiting until May? I'm, I'm just wondering. I'm not being an, an a-hole here. I'm just saying, like, if we know that this is really dire straits, why are we waiting for May? Why not do this today? I mean, what's stopping us? Other than if this is just a head fake to get the market to do their job for them, and not have to actually go through with this, which is something the Fed has been known to do in the past. Um, look, I don't think it's going to work the way they think it might work. I don't think that this little head fake is going to solve the problem for them, even though, as you can see, today was a really red day. But overall, the market is going to price in something very simple. The interest rates are still very, very low, 0.25%. Inflation is officially at 8% probably materially much higher than that there's no way we can you know get out of this with a little head fake now look if you want to hear why i think that we're headed to a recession in the next 24 months i'm going to tell you in a second but i'm going to do this on our main platform on tip ranks tv and it's just a second away now i know this may sound annoying Trust me, I totally understand, but we really want to have you guys check out the new platform and it would mean a lot to me as well. So I'm going to cut the video right here. But if you want to hear why I think there's probably anywhere from six to eight reasons that an inflation driven crisis and the potential recession is more likely than not, head on over to Tip Ranks TV. The link is going to be in the description below. And comment, tell me what you think about my theory, and I'll see you there. Now, if you're not going to go there, this has been fun. Thank you so much. I'll see you on Friday's video. All the best.